Engine orientation is something that we often encounter, especially on two-wheeled vehicles. Starting from horizontal, vertical, and also inclined orientation. And what is the function of this engine orientation? Why does every engine have its own uniqueness? And how important is orientation for an engine? The shape and orientation of an engine. Many people argue that the placement of the cylinder, whether vertical, horizontal, or inclined, plays a very important role in determining the efficiency and performance of the vehicle. Others argue that the position of the engine is based on the design of the motorcycle chassis and the cost of production. Let's understand each engine concept before we compare them. Let's start with the most common engine used in two-wheeled vehicles in the world, namely, the horizontal engine. Horizontal engine. As we can see, this engine comes with the concept of the cylinder position next to the crankshaft. FYI, this engine was first developed by Carl Benz in 1897. The main advantage of this engine concept itself is that it has a lower center of gravity compared to a vertical engine. And in addition, this engine can also produce a smoother sound and minimal vibration. In addition to the advantages of smoothness, this engine can also provide more space and design rigidity in a vehicle. With such an engine concept, it is possible to have a chassis with a straight, short, and light frame concept. Generally, this orientation is present in a low-budget motorcycle product. So low that it does not have a pressurized lubrication system to put oil into each moving part. However, even so in terms of lubrication, we can still say it is very safe because even without a pressurized lubrication system, the horizontal engine still uses a flash-type lubrication system to lubricate each area and moving part in the engine. This lubrication system works by means of a deepener attached to the piston rod with the working principle of sifting oil from the reservoir and distributing it to all bearing surfaces when the engine is running. Horizontal engines also offer several advantages for both the manufacturer and the user. First, a low center of mass, then low engine vibration, and even favorable engine cooling, even though it uses only airflow. As a result, using such a concept will certainly allow the engine to reduce ground clearance and increase the center of gravity on a vehicle. And not to forget that this concept can also increase stability and reduce weight without a liquid cooling system. Well, that's it for the advantages. As for the negative side, with the engine positioned like this, it tends to damage one side of the cylinder wall faster because there is a side that receives the friction cylinder and the load and power generated by the engine. Usually the position is at the bottom of the cylinder. Okay, that's the horizontal engine discussion. Now we continue with the discussion of vertical engine. Vertical engine. As we can see in the concept, the piston will move vertically up and down, and the crankshaft position is of course at the bottom of the cylinder. Usually this engine orientation is paired with an inline four or inline six engine, which means it is more suitable if it is paired with a heavy four-wheeled class vehicle or a large capacity inline engine. Now, in this engine orientation, there are many mystical beliefs that vertical engines will be more in the field of performance. Of course, this is a real misdirection, because when the cylinder has a vertical position, the total weight of the cylinder will clearly have an influence on the engine, and this will slightly reduce the overall efficiency of the engine, which in the end gives birth to a shortcoming. Then why is this engine concept most commonly used in four-wheeled vehicles? The answer is none other than because of the limited position of the engine bay, which can only be accessed from above. Because if we look at the engine of a Subaru car or an Audi car that uses a boxer engine configuration, we will not only find one or two expressions or conclusions, bringing maintenance to a horizontal engine car is very difficult. By the way, we have already discussed the boxer engine with 3D simulation, and as usual, we put the link in the description. Okay, moving on. What are its advantages, especially on two-wheeled vehicles? For the answers, you can see for yourself how many motorcycles with this orientation, of course, we will rarely meet, which in the end, you can conclude for yourself that the orientation has a reason that makes it applied only to a few motorcycles. Inclined engine. Okay, this is one of the other configurations that are widely scattered on high-end motorcycles because usually motorcycles that have inclined engine orientation are two-wheeled vehicles with high specifications. And inclined itself is further divided into two categories. There are front-inclined, which have many examples of vehicles that have been scattered on the roads, and rear-inclined, 
we take NSF 250R as a sample. This reverse inclined engine has the advantage of overcoming the shortcomings of a long swing arm because it is claimed to give a motorcycle better stability and is also coupled with a shorter wheelbase position. The reason is none other than because reverse inclined engines tend to be more compact. The reverse inclined can produce a motorcycle that tends to be more agile and is very suitable for use on the track. That is why Honda has applied this concept to the NSF 250R. But the drawback, if we compare it with front lean reverse lean will be because when the motorcycle breaks, the momentum in the oil will make it move forward while the motorcycle aggressively reduces speed. So, here we already know that there are a lot of factors to consider when designing and placing an engine on a vehicle. Which one gives the best performance? The answer is no, because the power produced by the engine has nothing to do with orientation issues, they all tend to have the same gravitational effect. Because if we look at it from a gravitational perspective, gravity will always favor downward motion. But if the piston is moving towards the top dead point, it will give the same weight to a piston, which ultimately serves no purpose in terms of performance. However, this gravity problem does not affect the horizontal engine because it has a lower center. In addition, the piston will move sideways, so there is really no definition of the influence of gravity on the performance of this horizontal engine. But of course, this lower center of gravity provides better stability to the vehicle. And because of the sideways movement position and low center of gravity, this engine has minimal vibration because it does not need to resist the direction of gravity. So why is it that small motorcycle engines are always paired with horizontal engines, while inclined engines are always paired with expensive motorcycles? For the answer, inline engines usually have complex parts like vertical engines, where a more perfect lubrication device is needed, as well as better engine cooling. Because the cylinder as the main heat source tends to lean toward the front of the vehicle, which allows air to provide a cooling process. And do not forget the position of the cylinder that tends to lean toward the front can minimize heavy friction on the cylinder wall. We can also conclude that this engine concept is very ready to be set to pursue a performance. While the horizontal engine with all the superior aspects that we have said before, it would be a pity if it had to be pushed as a performance engine. Even so, there are also horizontal engines whose engines are designed with a horizontal orientation specifically created as performance engines, namely the Daytona Anima or Takagawa Desmo. So which motor orientation works best for you? You can write in the comments below. We would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching.